What if the workouts that you're doing are actually working against you? Or what if the hit workouts that you're doing are holding you back more than they are helping you? If you've ever had these two questions throughout your weight loss journey as you're working towards losing body fat and toning up, this live video is for you. And if you're joining me today, please comment live below to let me know that you're tuning in live with me for another episode of our Tandem Talk show. As you probably know, my name is Coach G, and I'm a registered dietitian and a fat loss expert. And being online, I see a lot of people doing a lot of wrong things when it comes to working out for fat loss. And frankly, I do not want you to be one of them. My goal here through our podcast and through through these live videos is to help make fat loss easy and sustainable for you. And so in this live video today, my goal is to go over seven weight training facts that you need to know in order to help you lose body fat in a healthy and sustainable way. And so so also, you also get the best results possible from your weight training workouts. Now, again, if you're watching live with me, comment live below. Let me know you're tuning in and stay tuned for the very end as, as, as I have a free resource I would love to give you for staying to the very end of this episode. So seven weight training facts that you need to know in order to lose body fat and build muscle mass. Number one is you have to understand that when it comes to weight training, that lifting weights will not make you bulky. Okay. Lifting weights will not make you bulky. Time and time again, I've heard so many women mention, Hey, well, I don't want to weight train because I I don't want to get bulky. You know, I don't want to gain too much muscle mass. And I I certainly understand where they're, where they're coming from. However, what's interesting to note, you know, from science and your physiology, it's important to understand that women don't have the amount of testosterone, that muscle building hormone that men do to grow muscle mass at the rate that men do. And so instead of worrying about getting, you know, bulky, I think it's very important to understand how to properly weight train in a way that will help you build muscle mass maintain muscle mass and get stronger to help you lose fat faster because there's such a strong correlation between muscle and metabolism. And the reason why so many women are stuck with not being able to see consistent weight loss is because of months and months and months and maybe even years of chronic dieting that has caused muscle loss to happen over time. So one of the best habits to get into for sustained weight loss and for health and longevity is to weight train. So that is number one. Lifting weights will not make you bulky. Number two, and now this may surprise you, but the best workout in the world will not work if your diet is not dialed in. Let me repeat that. The best workout in the world will not work if your diet is not dialed in. So what does that mean? That means that you can be doing the best workout in the entire world. And if your nutrition is not on point, if you're not in a calorie deficit, you're not going to see results right? You're not going to see results because what's most important when it comes to fat loss is not what you do in the gym. It's not what you do on the treadmill. It's not what you do around your home. It's what you do in the kitchen. You have to make sure that if your goal is fat loss, that you're first and foremost in a protein focused calorie deficit, that is a priority. And if you're not really sure how many calories you need for fat loss, one kind of general rule of thumb that I have is to take your body weight your current body weight, multiply that by 10 to 11. And the range you get is a good starting range for your goals. Okay. It's not, it's not the end all be all for your calorie goal. You have to make some adjustments from there, but for most people, it's a good starting point. So always know that you cannot out train a bad diet and in order to lose body fat and to get the most from your workouts, you have to make sure that your diet is dialed in. Always remember that diet drives fat loss, not exercise, okay? The goal of exercise is not to burn calories, is not to see how many calories you can burn to to lose body fat. It's to maintain and grow muscle mass to help you burn calories long after the workout is done. Number three, HIIT workouts or circuits are not actual weight training, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. (laughs) HIIT workouts or circuits they are not actual weight training. Yes, they, they do involve lifting weights, 
But through all these classes and these programs, the amount of weight that you're lifting is not high enough to stimulate muscle building at a level that will make a positive impact on your metabolic rate. Furthermore, the impacts it has on cortisol and thyroid could be detrimental if done too often throughout the week and when combined with low calorie and low carbohydrate diet. That's why with our clients, we try to minimize HIIT workouts and circuits and focus on weight training three to four times a week and also hitting their, their calorie and also their carbohydrate goals. Believe it or not, carbohydrates are critical for fat loss. And it's important to make sure you're consuming enough calories, enough carbohydrates to lose body fat in a healthy way without allowing your hormones to be at a level that would make fat loss difficult. So that is number three. Hit workouts or circuits, they are not actual weight training. Do not use these as a replacement for weight training. You can absolutely do these throughout the week, but do, but do not use these as your main way of getting in weight training workouts. Now, number four. Doing light weight or higher reps, this type of rep scheme it does not tone your muscles. Right? I see, I go into a gym a lot here in Indianapolis and I see so many people doing 15, 20, 30 reps thinking that they are toning their muscles. No, there's really no such thing as toning muscles because muscles don't tone. We either grow muscle mass or we, or the muscle mass shrinks. And toning refers to getting more defined muscles. So it, it refers to the appearance that the muscles gives us through changing our body composition, namely losing body fat. And so the only way to get more toned or defined muscle is to lose body fat, to gain muscle mass, and to allow more of the muscle to be seen from the outer appearance, right? And the best way to do that, the only way is to drop overall body fat percentage. And so when it comes to light weights and you know, heavier weights <clears throat> or you know lower reps and, and higher reps, both are great for and, and should be used in a weight training program. They all have their place when it comes to helping you build muscle mass and maintain a, a fast me metabolism. But just know that when it comes to weight training, it's not always best to stick to one rep range. In fact, you know, going through my early studies of weight training in high school, I, I'm 35 now. I was always told that, hey, you got to do 35 reps or 15 reps or 20 reps. And yeah, maybe once or twice a month, not every day, especially not every day, because it's important that every workout you do that you're seeing progress from the previous workout. Number five. Number five is working out more will not get you better results. So more is not always better. And the thing is, I think a lot of people think that when it comes to weight training, that you have to do something every single day to see results, but that's not the case, right? The goal of weight training is to build muscle mass. And through the process of weight training, you're actually breaking down your muscle. Through the process of weight training, you're actually breaking down your muscle. And the only way it grows, the only way it recovers and repairs and gets larger is by the rest you take and the nutrients you consume after your workouts. So doing six or seven workouts a week will not cause you to get better results, right? So it's, it's what you can be most consistent with. And our clients here at Tandem, they work out three to four days a week and their workouts may be you know, 35 or 45 minutes in length. In fact, our most popular, our most popular way that our ladies train is through an upper body, lower body split. They do upper body twice. They do lower body twice. And we have two, two different rep schemes. We have a, a strength building focus with lower reps and we have a a toning up focus. So that's more of the hypertrophy with higher reps. So the alternate alternate that throughout the week. So for every lower body workout, they're doing one that is more lower reps and they're doing the other that is higher reps. And just know that doing more workouts throughout the week will not lead you to better results, right? Because rest and recovery and your nutrition intake is important to lie to get the most from those workouts. All right, number that was number five. Number five was working out more will not get you better results. Number six is this. Number six may surprise you. Number six is a very common myth. And people think that the sore you are after workout, the better your workout was. And that's just not the case. So soreness is, does not indicate how great a workout was. And not being sore also, mean, also doesn't mean that you didn't have a good workout. And so 
do not use soreness as an indicator of how well your workout went. The whole like no pain, no gain adage, right? That is not useful here because when you're working out consistently, you may not feel soreness for a few weeks and, and that's okay. Now, instead of focus on being sore, I want you to focus on being consistent with the workouts you're doing and doing your best to come within two to two to three reps of failure. So what does that mean? That means when you're doing a set, let's say you're doing some shoulder presses and you're on rep six and you hit rep seven and you hit rep eight and rep eight at rep, rep eight, you say, hey, I can probably do two or three more really good reps. And then after after that, my form will probably not be as good. And so that's what it means to be within two to three reps of failure. That when you hit a certain rep, whether it's rep seven or rep eight or rep 10, you kind of think in your head, hey, I probably have two more good reps and then I'm done, right? And so the good thing is, is, is to stop before that, right? You don't need to go to failure every single workout because again, that puts such a big impact on your central nervous system, causes a lot of stress and it's very hard to recover from. So with our clients, what we recommend is trying to keep every set, your reps, two to three reps from failure, every single workout, every single set. Now, there are some sets that you may feel really good. You want to push it and that's great, but just important not to go to the extreme of like pushing for one workout that you're going to, you know, failure every single set. That can be really hard to recover from and you'll be very, very sore, especially let's say you're sore for the next four days. You don't work out. Like how much does that impact your progress? A lot because you're not working out. So being consistent is key and making sure that every time you work out, from week to week that you're trying to trying to do a little more in the gym. For example, let's say on one like on one week, say last week, you did back squats, you did three sets of 10, maybe at 130, a good progression would be maybe do three sets of 11 at 130 or three sets of 10 at 135. So you want to try to challenge yourself a little bit more every single workout. And every single week to make sure that you are challenging your body and causing it to use more muscle mass so that muscle mass can be adapted or broken down to adapt to a stronger, a stronger body. So that's the key for, for growth in the gym. So that was number six. Number seven, last one is this. Crunches and sit-ups will not help you burn belly fat. Okay. Crunches and sit-ups will not help you burn belly fat. Man, this is a this is a very, very popular one. I think a lot of people think that in order to get a six pack, that they have to do endless crunches or or sit-ups. But exercise does not burn belly fat. Exercise does not burn body fat, right? So just because I'm doing exercise or like a sit-up, that does not mean that the fat on my stomach is being burned. The only way to burn belly fat or any type of fat is to be eating in a calorie deficit. And so when, when you're thinking about fat loss, your your focus should be on what you're eating, how many calories that you're eating. And then from that, we got to make sure that we're also uh, just being consistent with protein as well. Protein is the most important macro for fat loss. And we got to make sure we're being consistent with that. And it's important to grow muscle mass too. It's important to, you know, do sit-ups and, and, and crunches and, and you and train them like any other muscle group with resistance, right? With progressive overload between eight and 10, maybe 12 reps over time. And that will help you gain muscle mass, gain strength. And over time, you'll be able to see more muscle definition definition as you're dropping body fat from maintaining a calorie deficit and to and be consistent in your nutrition. So always know again that the purpose of lifting is to maintain or grow muscle mass and diet drives fat loss. Okay. So I hope that you found these seven facts of weight training helpful. Number one, lifting weights will not make you bulky. Number two, the best workout in the world will not work if your diet is not on point. Number three, hit workouts and circuits. They are not actual weight training. Number four, doing lighter lighter weight and more reps. These This type of design does not cause muscle toning. The only thing that causes muscle toning is being in a protein-focused calorie deficit to see muscle mass. Number five, working out more will not get you more or better results. And number six, 
<clears throat> Number six is soreness is not an indicator of how effective a workout was. And last but not least, crunches and sit-ups will not help you burn belly fat no matter how many you do. So if you watch this far into this live video and you want a free copy of our women's workout guide, comment guide below or send me a dm on instagram at tandem nutrition that is t-a-n-d-e-m tandem nutrition and i'll send you a free copy of our women's workout guide it's a five-step guide that i created that goes over how to specifically create an effective fat burning workout if your goal is to lose body fat gain most mass and get the most of your workouts Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.